Cancer and Biochemistry 12, the Citric Acid Cycle. Hello, it's October 3rd, 2018, and I am Dr. Colleen Huber, here again today in this ongoing series on cancer and biochemistry. In each one of these short videos, I give a very brief overview of the role of a particular nutrient with regard to cancer. I have discussed specific nutrients such as some of the B vitamins in my previous videos, and I will address a number of other nutrients in future videos in this series. I would like to focus on another entirely different group of nutrients, the amino acids. Here are many of the important functions of amino acids. We can see they are involved in making up the proteins of our bodies, helping to reproduce the next generation, even affecting our behavior. Also, you have seen in my previous videos on cancer and biochemistry how vitally important the mitochondria are to prevent and to detour away from cancer, away from the cancer machinery. In my previous videos, I discussed the mitochondria quite a lot. However, I have not yet mentioned a critical process that also takes place in the mitochondria. Let's now zoom our attention in, please, to the circle or oval right here. This has three names, at least one of which can strike fear into the hearts of biochemistry students. Those names are the Krebs cycle, the citric acid cycle, and the name the biochemists often use, which is the tricarboxylic acid cycle. Here is a close-up from Oregon State University. We see various molecules in the circle. By the way, what's the point of the circle at all if you just end up back where you came from? The purpose is to harvest the products that came from this cycle, NADH and FADH2, used for many purposes in the body, as well as carbon dioxide and our energy currency, ATP. So if we are to gain from or benefit from all those products, we have to first feed the citric acid cycle the fuels that it needs to let us have those products. In this graphic from bioinfo.org, we see some necessary nutrients that come into the citric acid cycle. These are gathered from our foods. And in this case, what we are looking at is a long list of amino acids. So what are amino acids? Amino acids are small breakdown products of the proteins that we eat. You may think of proteins when you think of beef, chicken, or fish. However, you also derive proteins from dairy, vegetables, and grains. An important source of protein for many people is rice and beans. Eggs are also rich in proteins. Those proteins are all specific to the animals and plants from which they came. For us to rebuild those into the proteins that construct our own human bodies, the proteins that we need to rebuild after injury, to repair wounds, to build the tissues of our bodies, for us to be able to do that, we need to first break those proteins down to their basic building blocks. Those building blocks are called amino acids. Amino acids are the basic construction materials from which we humans can put together long strings of proteins that are usable in the human body, such as this image from Autism Coach. An example of this is collagen. Collagen of various types forms our bones, our cartilage, many of our tissues. I tell my patients that collagen is the bricks and mortar of which we are made. So amino acids are critically important to that function, but I cannot call them essential because only about half of the amino acids are technically essential, meaning we cannot make them and we must derive them from food. So we need to eat protein in order to obtain about half of our amino acids. Here is a list from BioNinja of the three different types of amino acids. The essential amino acids are those that we must derive from foods. We sometimes need the conditionally non-essential ones from foods and our bodies make the quote non-essential unquote amino acids. I know I'm going through that background very quickly, but that is just so I can get to the important part. So to summarize what we have so far, here is the citric acid cycle. It is a necessary process to give us energy and supplies needed for the rest of our metabolism. It only can go through its process, it can only move, with the help of many amino acids. Those amino acids are summarized in this diagram. Don't bother memorizing the citric acid cycle intermediates, that is the very steps along the circle. I will mention them briefly. Citrate, isocitrate, alpha-ketoglutarate, succinyl-CoA, succinate, fumarate, malate, oxaloacetate, and bactocitrate. Or you could say this as, can I keep swimming swiftly for miles on course? But like I say, don't worry about that part unless you're enrolled in a biochemistry curriculum. More importantly is that we arrive to the citric acid cycle at all. Here is one of the countless miracles of the citric acid cycle. We are inside of the mitochondria. The mitochondria is the normal metabolic pathway. 
This is the pathway that best processes our food to give us energy, and of huge importance, it detours away from the cancer pathway. In my previous videos in this series, I talked about how that normal metabolism goes this way into the mitochondria, which is the power plant of a cell, and how that's different from the way cancer functions. Cancer goes off this way, to the side, from pyruvate to lactate, skipping the mitochondria altogether. Cancer may even act as a machine to take extra glucose. Oops, too much sugar, too many sweets coming into the body at once. Maybe it was Halloween. Maybe it was a birthday celebration. Maybe it was, well, we won't examine all possible reasons. There was simply excess sugar that the body could not easily handle. That extra glucose comes racing down this way and over to an easy, fast off-ramp here, here to lactate. That is when the main highway going straight here into the mitochondria has too many obstructions. One of those obstructions could well be insufficient amino acids to churn the process, this process of the citric acid cycle. That would back up the machinery right about here where pyruvate is converted to oxaloacetate. And then we are stuck, mired in this pathway here, Unfortunately, the pathway that favors cancer metabolism. This is the cancer machine going from pyruvate to lactate over here. In a nutshell, this is what cancer does, its function, to convert pyruvate to lactate. But why? Because it is the body's way of finding a fast and simple way to get rid of a boatload of sugar. And, very importantly, because there was some nutrient deficiency here in the mitochondria. That normal pathway is severely obstructed without the B vitamins that I discussed in my previous videos in this series, as well as the amino acids which drive the citric acid cycle. I find the best effect of the nutrients in synergy. Just look at this tapestry, this whole tapestry here. You can't go very far with one thread without another one coming to join it. I will explain all this more in my upcoming videos. I'm Dr. Colleen Huber. It's October 3rd, 2018, and thanks for watching.